Right, this is Rob. Um, got a Kugu G booster that's come in. Uh, it's got a couple of faults, but I'm going to address this one. The rear wheel not straight. And if we look down here, we can see that the uh, brake disc is quite close to the uh, arm. And if we look along this edge here, I know the rear mudguard isn't always straight, but you can tell that that is a bit drunk. Um, if I get my calipers, wake them up, zero them out, put them in the hole, um, about 3.8 millimeters um, between the disc and the thing. So I'd say that's definitely leaning off to the left. Now, my first suspect uh, is the arm. Uh, not just because I've seen this happen to quite a few of these arms, but it's easiest for me because I have a spare already in stock. So, first I need to actually be able to remove the wheel. That means undoing all of this spiral up inside the thing. Um, that means that I've got to take the lid off, so I've got to use my, um, my size 4 hex head to remove all of the uh, bolts that are in here. Um, and then I've got this thing which is required for you need to pass the, the motor power cable through the socket and the wrench. So if you've got a standard wrench set then it, it's not going to work. Um, uh, however, if you've got sockets that uh, are size 22 mil uh, or 22 or 24, can't remember, it's one of those two. Um, and the socket has a hexagonal outside, you can use a spanner and pass the cable through the square which would normally go to your ratch, but no, I've got this special tool. And none of my sockets have the hexagonal outside diameter, though <laughs> quite typical that they're all uh, round ones. Right, before I continue, because this is tw twisted and the brake calipers do actually, uh, the discs pinch down on the thing. Let's check the disc, see if the brake disc is okay. Spin the wheel, and that's good. That is very good. Right, okay. So, that's good news. Um, we'll try swapping out the arm first because uh, it's uh, not just the cheapest bit, but I've got it in stock and it's what I suspect first because I have seen a, uh, people have had rather hard wax to this wheel in the past and it's uh, bent the arm somehow. When you've removed these uh, 10 bolts, you'll also have to remove the mug guard. It's these four bolts there, so which makes it easier. It allows you to slide it back. Um, there is a way of going up and over, but it does put scratches on the mud guard that don't good, don't look good. And this isn't mine. This is a customer's. Once you've uh, removed all of those bolts and the ones on the suspension as well, both sides, um, this one can be a little bit tricky with a straight tool. Um, you can sort of go in underneath it but uh, or just used an, a normal angled allen key um, but this will allow you to remove the mud guard Let's put that down there and slide back the lid and lift it off now once you have the lid off you can see all the goodies inside just make sure that uh, everything looks okay um, Nothing's been pinched, no exposed wires, um, cables for the motor, uh, just relieve those and the brake cable as well um, because you'll need to disconnect those in a little while. Also take note, green normally goes to green but when it's the back wheel, blue goes to yellow and yellow goes to blue. Um, so it's the blue and yellow are swapped. It doesn't really matter. Um, any 
any two out of the three can be swapped to get the motor to spin the correct way. But uh, that's for the rear motor and for the front motor, um, it's quite literally mounted on the other side, which means the motor is revolving in the opposite direction, is considered the correct way. And we'll find down here, um, uh, we can't really see it. Come on, focus. Blue goes to blue and yellow goes to yellow. As I said earlier, um, we need to liberate this cable of all the spiral binding so that we can thread the actual cable to get the nut off. Um, so that means disconnecting these three wires here. And just remember, whatever configuration it was in, just take note of it, but normally green to green, blue to yellow and yellow to blue for the rear wheel. Once you've freed the motor cable, you can then go ahead and remove the rubber cap. I'm glad that came off easy, else I would have had to done that off camera. So that allows you to access the nut and of course you can feed that uh, through your socket or through hole wrench if you have one. It is a 24 mil socket that uh, you require. If you're using one of these, check the direction just to make sure that you are pulling it the same way and then you can feed both on at the same time. Right. Once you've loosened the nut, it's always a good idea to hold on to the top with one hand or thing if you have the, um, if you're working on the scooter elevated off the ground. Because as soon as the nut and the washer come out of this hole, it will drop down. So I'm just going to loosen off that nut, pull it back. You can see that the, the washer is actually holding the wheel up at the moment. And with a bit of a, uh, I can't do this on camera, I don't think. Oh yes, I can, there you go. And then the motor detaches like that. Uh, just make sure that you, you remove one washer and leave the other washer in place. Um, and then you can remove uh, both the uh, nut and the washer from the terminals and put them in a safe place. Once the wheel has been removed, you'll have to remove the brake assembly um, using these two bolts here. But before you undo the bolts, you need to do the nuts first so undo these nuts which are 8 mil and then you can undo this with a little bit of ease using the uh, 4 mil hex tip once you've removed the brake assembly and it's quite happily uh, having a good time down there just remove the rubber cap which is being a pain in the bum so I'm going to do this off camera. Once all the non-YouTube words and uh, the rubber cap is removed, you can go ahead and remove the nut. So once you've uh, got the nut loose, I could have gone a bit further there, uh, remove the nut and the washer. And uh, obviously uh, keep all your, uh, the bits that you're using in a nice safe place. So, oh, shouldn't do that really. If, if I bump the bench, that'll fall on the floor. Right, now what you see is uh, we've got the round thing that the nut went on, and there's, behind it is a square shape. Now, that is very, very tight on the um, arm here. So, you're gonna have to get something down here and pry it away off of this lever here. So the arm will come off, um, do what you can to uh, stop uh, from scratching. Well, I'm not scratching this arm, it's the old one. But I don't want to scratch it just in case it's not the arm that at fault. But I need to get something down here and pry without causing any scratches to the actual bodywork. Once you have the arm loosened up enough, go ahead and remove. Um, be careful where you put this because this might have a little bit of grease so 
I'd say put it this side down somewhere and you see this is very greasy and oily it also have attracted a lot of grit as you can see just on the tip there so make sure you give this a damn good clean and uh, re-oil it before you assemble uh, with the new part once you've uh, cleaned off all the grime and uh, cleaned out the thread and done the best you can uh, place the new arm on, uh, no need to uh, bang it into position, uh, the washer and the nut will do that for us. Once you've uh, done the nut up, replace the rubber bung, give it a little twist so you know where it fits over the hex and just press it in with your thumb. If it's not going to go in with, uh, with your thumb alone, uh, check the inside of the rubber, make sure it's not clogged and if you have to, uh, something like a mallet and only use this on a part that's rubber already Just give it some taps um, Nice and gentle. It's all about the mass not about how hard you're hitting it Once you've uh, got the rubber bung in place, then you'll want to reattach the brakes They go on the inside there put your bolts through first and then put the nuts on afterwards um, so uh, let's hang that down there. These are the bolts and nuts um, that way round. So yeah, always uh, start the bolts off first. Um, if you're having problems uh, getting a tool around these, just because it's quite tight in here, then maybe you know help get them started. Just as the bolt pokes through this bit and then the little black bit sorry the little black bit on there uh, once it parks through and that and then you'll have less struggling to do they will still need tightening after you've tightened the bolt so you tighten the bolt first and then you tighten the nuts off whilst locking the bolt in place so if your ring spanner hasn't quite got the best angle for uh, getting in there then just get these flush with the black panel and then put the nut over the top with the rubber locking pin uh, seal on the outside and then uh, continue to do these up into the nut but like I say you will have to lock that off and get it nice and tight before you finally tight that, tighten that one once you've got the brake assembly and everything has been done up uh, you want to reconnect the wheel now uh, when you reconnect the wheel especially if you're using an elevated surface like this just have the washer ready so what you can do is you can pull that up into the shape and with the washer already on the wires um, always make sure there's one washer on the wheel and one washer uh, on the cable when you start this um, so when this mounts on you'll have one washer on this side and the other washer on this side and what I was saying about having the washer ready is you got to pull this up two sides are smooth you get that up into the the horseshoe shape make sure that you guide the disc brake into the brakes and then if you push this washer into that hole you can actually let go relax your hands again before tightening you'll need to raise this back up to the center of the hole which means that the thing might move but having that washer there just to hold it will help you get the nut on the cable and there get ready with your tool and then you can start going. It's a, it's all a bit too much to try and put the wall and have have all your tools ready. You can try if you want though. Once you've tightened the nut up, you might notice that the wheel doesn't want to spin without rubbing the brakes. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, that means that the uh, the gap, the angle has changed. And if we look from the back to the front, make sure the front wheel is straight but you can pretty much see 
this edge, this edge, and the edge of the front wheel all lining up. And that means that we should have this nice and straight now. Now, if we get out the uh, calipers and uh, let's get down there, check the width. Ooh, I slipped. Let's try that again. Get the width there. We're now on 6mm, which is a hell of a lot closer to what it should be. Um, I haven't done enough to actually find out the exact average of what it should be yet, but let's do this again. The exact same place, ooh, same place as it was last time. 5.88 well I think I caught the calipers on the way out but uh, 5.93 so yeah that that's uh, definitely a different width than in than the three and a half millimeters that it was earlier so that is a good sign that it was the arm that got bent so because it's rubbing on the brake and that's because these brakes were adjusted up uh, to the wheel that was tilted you need to loosen that bolt and that bolt so that you can get this the uh, the whole mechanism so it can rotate hang on bear with me right so now it's you got a bit of movement on there now you gotta remember it's this side that moves in and this side stays static so when you tight make the adjustments front and back you don't want the back wall move uh touching the cylinder because they're never perfectly straight or after a time it won't be but uh you want it as close to the back wall as you can get without touching and then allow the moving part to, to then press it into the edge you don't want the moving part moving it quite a way over into the back pad. Um, you want it fairly close to the back pad, but as long as it isn't rubbing. Once you've got the brakes uh, bolts tightened up and all aligned, and you give it a spin, and there's no rubbing, it's all perfectly lined up within the brake caliper. Um, then before you make the electrical connections you will want to put the rubber bung with the hole in down the cable and up over the nut I'm going to do that off camera because it's a bit fiddly right once you've got the rubber on you want to bring the cable up to around about here measure it out along to the groove get it sat down in the crease down the battery up to the front and then redo the electrical connections remember green to green yellow to blue and blue to yellow because it's the rear wheel we want it spinning the correct way right once you've made your motor connections tucked it all down the side of the battery and got the spiral back on the cables to protect them and it's still all spinning freely Without any noise, turn it on and uh, give it an accelerate and just make sure that it spins the right way. Once you've done that, you want to get the uh, lid back on, put all the bolts back in and also reattach the mug guard and the four bolts that hold that in place. When tightening the bolts up, you want to make sure that they go down to the bottom and then back them up just a little bit uh, with the front ones and then do the ones at the back. Um, if you do the front ones and then the back ones, do them all mostly the way up but not tightened and then go around and tighten all of them you won't end up with one of these holes misaligned. Once you've got all the bolts back in place, the mug guard reconnected, what you want to do is clean down these edges 
and get your grip tape back on there. If you're having problems getting the grip tape to stick back down, I use this uh, spray adhesive. Uh, I thought only because I've got it around and it works really well. However, um, most spray adhesives and uh, particularly uh, the carpet, um, the under carpet adhesive works well. So this is the one problem on this one, all sorted. The wheel is now going straight. It's not tr uh, crabbing to the left. Um, the brakes aren't rubbing. And that's uh, this video done. Hopefully this will help you fix yours. This is Rob from Emotion Repairs.